Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a brake caliper. The caliper on my brakes went bad after changing out all the brakes. I noticed that it was leaking, and if these things leak, they need to be replaced or rebuilt. This is going to show you how to replace them. It's pretty easy. If you could do the brakes on your car, you could replace a brake caliper. So here are all the tools you're going to need to do the job. Just a bunch of different ratchets, open-ended wrench, thread locker, different size sockets and extension, a breaker bar, a torque wrench, and some brake fluid. Now let's begin. The first step is going to be to get the brake pads out. To get these brake pads out, we just unscrew this bolt back here. This is 12 millimeter, and we'll undo the top one to open this up like a clamshell. Got that out. Now this should just pop right open, just like a clamshell, good. Like I said, these are brand new brakes. Just a little bit of rust from the rain from last night. So we'll put these right back in when we're done. Now just close this back up, put our bolt back in, and we can just hand tighten this. Before we unbolt the caliper from the knuckle, what we're going to want to do is there's a banjo bolt here that brings the brake fluid into the caliper. We want to crack that, because right now it's connected, you know, it's solid. If we try to crack this later, we're going to have to do it on a bench and it's going to move around. So now's a good time to crack this. Just get your ratchet. This is a 15 millimeter. Just crack it open, brake fluid's coming out, so then I'm going to close this. So now that I broke this bolt, it'll be no problem to take off later. Now we're going to remove the caliper bracket bolts that connect the caliper to the knuckle. Now we're looking from the back of the caliper. We have to take two bolts off. There's this bolt right up here that needs to come out, and that bolt down here that needs to come out. The caliper bracket bolts are usually on here pretty tight, so I'm going to be using a breaker bar, nice and long, a lot of leverage. This bolt that you need to get off is right there. This is a 15 millimeter in my case. Do the top one first. Good. Now we'll do the bottom one. Good. And now we can use a regular ratchet to get both bolts out completely. That's one. So one thing to remember is we have the top bolt off. Now we're undoing the bottom one. After the bottom one, there's nothing to hold this up. So we want to hang on to the caliper so it doesn't just drop. Got the second one out. Now I have a bucket here ready. And that'll hold the brake caliper. You don't want to have any pressure on this brake hose because you could damage it. We're not replacing the brake hose. We're only replacing the caliper. While doing this, I should mention, this brake rotor is going to want to move around. So what I do is I hold it down. I get one of my lug nuts. And I tighten it all the way down. And I'll just add one more to the other side. Give it even more stability so this rotor doesn't move at all. Now it's going to help us, it's going to keep this in place, so it'll make putting the new caliper on a lot easier. I added a box on top of the bucket, just so that it raises it up even more, just so that there's even less stress on this. It'll also allow me to turn this like that, so I could unscrew this. Now with this brake caliper here completely off, let's put the new one on. Since we're bolting on the caliper, we get the caliper bolts, and we add some Loctite thread locker on each one and that'll just prevent vibrations from loosening this up. Get our new caliper, put it into place, slip our bolt in there, hand tighten this caliper bolt in, put the top one in, get the bottom one aligned, and hand tighten it. Now we'll get in here, snug this up for now, And we'll snug the bottom bolt as well. Now with this caliper mounted, it'll make transferring this banjo bolt and the brake line to the new caliper a lot easier and a lot less messy. Our kit comes with these anti-rattle clips, and we'll put these on later. What we need from that is these two copper washers. Get our socket, 15 millimeter, crack that, and then loosen it up. Right away, brake fluid's gonna start leaking out, so we're gonna make this transfer real quick. Take your banjo bolt out. I'm gonna clean off the banjo bolt. You can see it has a hole in it on the bottom and on the side, and that allows the brake fluid to flow through this. When looking at your banjo bolt, you can see that one of the copper washers is flattened down on here really good. It actually doesn't even look like there is a washer on here, but make sure you get it off. There's also a copper washer on this, which is the brake line, so make sure you take that off. So make sure you get something to get this washer out. That's very important. Good. Got that off. Now we'll take our new one, just slide our new one on all the way. Slide it in the brake line, 
Get your other washer, put it on the bottom, and then this bolts right in. Real quick, no mess. It's a little messy on here, but there's no mess on the new caliper. And we're gonna just quickly snug this. Okay, that's snugged enough that it won't leak. So you can see how the banjo bolt gets set up. There's a copper washer at the top. You can see there's this lip thing here that actually goes on the top. I know it looks like it should probably go on the bottom, but it goes on the top. And then underneath is another copper washer. So the copper washers compress really well and they press against this and they prevent leaks because this brake system is under a lot of pressure. So you don't want any leaks. That's why those copper washers are there. I should mention that a lot of people like to clamp the brake line. I don't like to do that because it could cause permanent damage to the brake line. If you clamp this to try to prevent fluid from coming out, you could crush the tubing in here and also you could crack this and it's just going to make you have to replace this whole brake line here. With the brake line transferred, we could get this whole caliper and bucket set up out of the way. Make more room. Now we have all that room, we could start working on this, getting the brake pads in and also bleeding the brakes. So before we do anything else, let's just torque this down. On my truck, the banjo bolt gets torqued down to 25 foot-pounds. Remember, I have both the washers on there. Right now, this torque is going to impress the washers against the surfaces, making a nice and solid seal. And there we go. 25 foot-pounds. So the caliper bracket bolts on my truck get tightened down to 85 foot-pounds. That's the top one. And that's the bottom one. With everything torqued down and tightened, let's put the brake pads in. This is a 13 millimeter, which is different from before. The old calipers were 12. Good. Now this will open up like a clamshell. Remember that we have these brake anti-rattle clips. This holds the brake pads in so they don't shake around and vibrate. If you don't know where these go, reference your old brake caliper. This large one here goes on the top. It has two clips that just click in, just like so. And these smaller ones actually mount to the bracket. So if we're looking down at the bracket, you can kind of see the brake pads sitting here. And in the bracket, you can see there's a little divot. So this just quite simply fits in that divot. And you just push down, just like so. And the other one, same thing except for the top bracket. You just get the fit in and it clicks right in just like that. Again, if you don't remember where they go, just look at the old caliper, you can see that big one goes in the middle just like it does there. And then the two side ones go on the caliper bracket right there. And the other one's right up there, just like we did up here. Now since this is a brand new caliper, even though I have brand new brake pads, we don't need to compress these pistons. These pistons are already compressed all the way, so you just take your brake pad and these brake pads just slide right into those clips that you just put in. And that's where they mount. You want to add grease to the brake parts that have metal to metal contact on the caliper. Make sure you use very little grease when doing this. You'll grease where the brake pads sit and contact the caliper on those anti-rattle clips that we just installed, shown by the red circles. And you also want a thin layer of grease on the back of the brake pads, shown in the red box. Do this for both sides of the caliper and both brake pads. These brake pads have leftover grease from the recent installation that I did, so I'm not adding more grease myself. I don't like using a lot of grease. The other side is the same exact thing. They just slide right in. So now both brake pads are in. Let's close up this caliper. The caliper should just close up. Might need to give it a little wiggle. Now the springs should keep a little resistance on the brake pads, that's the whole point. It keeps them from rattling, keeps them from moving around. So you can see, if I try to push this in, it'll bounce back out. That's exactly what you want. So just get your bolt, slide it in, push down your brake as you slide this in so it aligns. Then I'm going to get my 13 millimeter, tighten it up. On my truck, this gets torqued to 20 foot-pounds. I just use this small one quarter inch ratchet and that's pretty much as hard as I could pull upwards with one hand and that's good. All we have to do is bleed this brake system and we are done. So there's our banjo bolt right above it usually at the highest point of the caliper we have our bleeder valve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna gravity bleed it right now so that just means you crack this open. So I have a 3 8 inch wrench that I'm just gonna crack this open with and I'm just gonna open it up just like that might want to get a paper towel and put it below. So what's happening right now is just because of gravity, the brake fluid is filling up the cylinder. You have to remember that the brake line is up here 
the master cylinder is all the way up there. So gravity is just going to force that brake fluid out and into this. So we're just going to wait for this to leak. And once this leaks, I'll close it up and I'll bleed it. It also helps to loosen up the master cylinder cap to let air in so that it bleeds out faster just like that. And once I open the cap, it bleeds pretty quickly. So close that off. Remember, brake fluid is super corrosive. It'll damage rubber, it'll damage paint. So I always try to clean it up right away. Make sure it's not on anything. Now we should check our brake fluid level since we've lost a little. But this looks good, so let's bleed the brakes. So now here's the bleeder that I made. It's a self bleeder. I'm gonna show you how to make this in another video. So if you wanna see how to make this, I'll put the link to that video in the description below. And I'm also not gonna go crazy explaining how to bleed brakes. If you don't know how to do it, then check out my other video on how to bleed brakes, and that'll also be in the description below. Now if you want, you don't need this fancy setup, you could just have somebody press on the brakes as you crack that open. I just do this because I'm doing this by myself, so I made a one-man bleeder. So I'm just going to crack this bleeder valve open, and then go in the car and press on the brakes. Okay, good, I can see there's bubbles in here, it's getting forced out. I'm going to keep bleeding until I don't see any bubbles here. Okay, there are no more bubbles. So I'm going to just close off that bleeder valve. The good thing is all the brake fluid gets caught over here and the bubbles bubble out. So when I close off this bleeder valve, there's no air getting trapped. And one last thing, since we just bled the brakes, go check the master cylinder. You can see this is a little bit low, so I'm just going to add some more fluid till it goes to the max full line. Good. Before you go on a test drive, make sure you pump your brakes to make sure that there's no air in them. You'll feel like they're soft or they go to the floor if you didn't bleed them right. If you didn't bleed them right, just go ahead and bleed them again until that brake pedal feels firm. And remember where your emergency brake is. Make sure there's nobody behind you or in front of you when you're testing the system out. Don't go fast to start. Make sure your car brakes and then check for leaks. Those are just some safety precautions that I would take. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Up on the screen are going to be some videos. You can click on the video on the screen, or you can find a link to those videos in the description below. Also in the description below are the links to the Chris Fix Facebook and Twitter pages. Check it out.